Hey, welcome back, everyone. Chris Lopez here. And today we are talking about the December 2020 MLS market stats for Colorado Springs. And Jenny Bayless is here to walk us through it. Good morning, Jenny. How are you? I'm doing great. How about yourself, Chris? Oh, I'm doing really good. I'm curious to see if the Springs market is any different than the Denver market, but I have a feeling it's probably not is what <laughs> my crystal ball is, is telling me to guess. Yeah, I'm going to say that you're probably right on that one. <laughs> so what are you seeing down there? It's more of the same. I'm beginning to sound like a broken record, but it just somehow keeps getting tighter and tighter every time we, we speak about it. And it's kind of unbelievable to me, but we can kind of dive into the numbers a little bit um, for, more, uh, for more data on that. Um, same thing as last month, the showing trends are higher than they've been over the last several years, um, over 12 showings per property. And I think that is just really indicative of the fact that there are hardly any properties for sale. So everyone is seeing the same properties over and over and over again. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And give, give us context here. So when we're seeing 12 people through every property, what was mm -hmm. it like in you know, the, the non COVID years pre COVID? Yeah. So even just last year, December, there was an average of eight showings per property. Um, and that was kind of similar for, for 2017 and 2018 as well. So the fact that it's bumped up, um, you know, four showings additional per property uh, extrapolated over the population of properties for sale, that's just, um, yeah, that's a lot of showings. And um, just to kind of give you an anecdote of, of a conversation that I had with one of my clients that were listing uh, their properties, we were getting a little nervous about um, just kind of the timing of everything, how we were going to end up listing her home in December, a few weeks before Christmas. I said, you know, I don't know. Um, I think we'll be okay. Let's just kind of, we'll, let's just list it and see what happens. <laughs> and the, the showings were unbelievable. The amount of um, offers that we received were unbelievable. I well, how many, like how many showings, how many offers did you get? Like roughly? <laughs> So um, we only took offers for one day and only did showings for one day. And uh, I think there was 15 showings or something on that, on that one day. And we received four offers, all of which were significantly above list price. Hmm. Can you give the ballpark? Like what was the range of this house? Like what is it? Cause this, this is the client who um, they are, they are nomading mm -hmm. and selling this to just, take some equity off the table, right? Yes. And we did a fix and list strategy for this property. So we were able to um, really do it up really well. It looked beautiful. Um, very excited with how that turned out. And so they listed it for um, 350. We haven't closed yet. So I'm a little reluctant to yeah, <laughs> take but... it out the numbers, but it, it was significantly above what they listed it for. Wow. Yeah. Okay, and so what day of the, what day of the week did you go live? Um, I believe we went live on a Friday and they were still doing some last minute fixes in the home. Um, so they asked that showings don't begin until Saturday. So, um, as soon as Saturday opened, um, my showing time app was going haywire <laughs> with, with people squeezing in. Um, cause with COVID and everything, you can't have um, overlapping showing. Yep. So, um, it was just consistent, um, 15 to 30 minute intervals of, of people booking up appointments. And the reason you guys, I mean, you know, a lot of times you, you let it ride throughout the weekend, mm -hmm. but you guys, I mean, it was, it was Saturday and that was ever saw it Saturday, they put offers in and then you guys made a decision a couple days after that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Sun Sunday, because, um, yeah, it was just the, the sellers saw that all of the offers that we had, they're pretty similar to one another. And, you know, I told them, I said, we're probably going to get just more similar offers to what we, what we currently have. We can keep collecting them and you guys have more to go through, or we can take what we have um, and go through those. And they just wanted to take what we had and go through those. Makes sense. And last thing mm -hmm. I'll say on here, because you, you alluded to this at the beginning of this uh, conversation that you know, you're listing it a couple weeks before December. 
which is usually not the ideal time to list a property. Mm -hmm. But since we, you know, we, Denver in the Springs has just like virtually no inventory, <laughs> it's actually appearing to be like a really good time because of exactly what you experience. So yeah, you'll get as many people as you can through there on whatever we're allowed to with whatever current COVID regulations and <laughs> you're gonna get offers coming in. Yeah, it, we were all very pleasantly surprised yeah. with uh, with what happened, but it makes sense in hindsight, having looked at this data that um, that makes perfect sense. It was completely in line with, uh, with, with what we're seeing here collectively. Mm -hmm. Now, how is the inventory and all that stuff looking down, down there? So when I mentioned last year for November's roundup, I said, wow, I can't believe we have less than 500 units. Well, now I'm going to say that again. Wow, I can't believe we have less than 400 units. Um, we only have 379 single family active inventory as of December. <laughs> Compared to 379. 379 compared to 934 of December of last year. And so, I mean, that is what almost two thirds less, right? Well, mm -hmm. a little less than two thirds. About 60%. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's, is that just single family or is that also condos and townhomes? That is just single family. Con condos and townhomes, probably not even worth mentioning. Um, 32 units. Oh my gosh. So, about <laughs> 400 properties total at the end of the month. Uh huh. Now I know we were talking as we've been, you know, you've been cranking down the springs. How many do you have in your contract? 10 as of today. 10. So you are, oh my gosh, this is, you're actually like a significant part of like that inventory. <laughs> like, you know, so you're, was that two, we did that. We was at two and a half percent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's awesome. Well, congratulations to you. Um, Thanks. And most of those are on the buy side, right? Yes. Only one listing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have the one list we talked about nine on the buy side, yeah. uh, but you are legitimately like two and a half percent <laughs> under contract and active, active inventory right now. Yeah. Like, like I mentioned previously, lots of begging to listing agents, lots of, you know, really talking up our offers and crossing our fingers and <laughs> hoping it lands. But um, yeah, luckily our buyers are, are very strong and we're able to articulate why, why someone should go with us as, as, uh, you know, as the buyers instead of somebody else. Well, if you, if you got nine buy sides in our contract, you're, you're, you're begging as you put it, <laughs> maybe, maybe negotiating, um, is, it's going well. So that's awesome, Jenny. Congrats. Thanks. Um, so yeah. Okay. That... So low inventory and all the other metrics, I'm looking at the stats now. They all look, I mean, it's all the same stuff that just yeah. points towards a super low inventory. Mm -hmm. It's all the same stuff that we've been saying, just somehow even more constructed, believe it or not. Not sure how that's possible, but um, yeah, that's what we're seeing. So total sales year to date um, is higher than it's ever been on a December, which again, makes sense because November activity was extremely um, busy. December was extremely busy. People probably wanted to close prior to Christmas. So that that's all congruent with what we're seeing. Um, average days on market, uh, it dropped to 19 compared to 34 last December. That's crazy. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, who, who would have thought that this December would be so, so busy? But um, yeah, same thing that we've been seeing also is the median sales price um, pretty much in line with what we saw in November, 380,000. Again, compared to December of 2019, it was 330,000 was the median. So um, that's a really substantial jump, in my opinion, between one year gap. Um, so and what I've been telling people is that if you have a property that is valued at or below the median, that is going to be a feeding frenzy, um, whichever way you are, whether you're the owner or the buyer. Um, it's, it's going to be very active. Yeah. And I mean, on that note, I mean, you know, this is, you know, if someone's sitting on a bunch of equity, it might be, you know, a rental they've had for five years, 10 years, 15 years, um, <clears throat> really good time to consider maybe selling that 1031 of the money and redeploying it or mm -hmm. if it makes sense to do a cash out refi kind of depends on the numbers and the houses, but usually what we see in a lot of properties, it makes the most sense to sell 
1031 and trade up, even with the transaction cost, you get a, you know, a lot of times that has the greatest return factor for you. Someone out there has a property in the Springs that they've had for a while and they're selling some equity. Talk to us. We can help you run numbers and optimize it and figure out, hey, do you keep it or do you make a, you know, make a few monopoly moves with it? Mm -hmm. So yeah, more of the same. Uh, nothing really to, to talk about further in terms of the monthly statistics, but um, we did include a fun article in this month's roundup as well. Um, that Colorado Springs zip code 80911 was ranked the number one hottest zip code by realtor.com. Um, and for those of you that might not be as familiar as to what zip code this aligns with, it's uh, better known as the security wide field um, area of, of Colorado Springs. What about it? I mean, what's the, what's the executive summary and why it's the hottest place? Yeah, so there's a lot of incoming growth that a lot of people have um, high expectations for to bring in economic growth to this particular area. Um, myself included, um, I'm buying a property on Friday as is one of my buyer clients in the zip code. Um, so we're pretty excited about that prior to this article coming out. So maybe that kind of boosted up prices since then. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I think that there's a lot of industry coming to this area, specifically the Colorado Springs airport area. There's um, gonna be a new Amazon center that's coming in. There's new tech jobs that are coming in um, right around the airport region and just kind of based on proximity, I think, and proximity and then also room to grow. Keep in mind that median price that I had mentioned earlier. I think that security wide field is the best poised to be able to um, pull their values up um, as a result. Great. Well, I mean, we got this article on and all the stats, this article, it's all on the show notes page. I mean, other than the market being what it has been that last few months, just even tighter now, what, what closing thoughts can end on? <laughs> or is that it? I mean, that's the punchline, right? Yeah. Just be persistent, be patient. Um, I know that it's frustrating if you want to buy property here, either as a, as a rental or as a um, homeowner and we're, you know, in that 400,000 and less range, it, it can be extremely frustrating um, to be able to buy something, but let's just be patient and we'll eventually get something. All right. Well, Jenny, thanks so much. This was great. Thank you.